Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. It's been a minute. Let's see if I remember how to do all this. Uh, I know I'm supposed to say like and subscribe. I'm not sure when. So I think I just did that. Okay, so that's out of the way. Second thing, let's see. Uh, I want to talk about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is me and this. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video and also give you a life update about all the things and moving pieces in my life. So uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. But today's video is all about the camera gear that I've used from 2021 to 2023 in my street photography. And this video is inspired by a blog post I read from uh, travel and street photographer Roman Fox. And I'll leave a link to that down below if you wanna see what he's doing with his street photography stuff. So obviously street photography is open to interpretation what it is. It means something different to everybody and we all tend to do it differently, which is totally cool in my opinion. So this is how I approach it. The things I've used uh, as far as gear to help me create the photos I want. And <laughs> the funny thing is, as I, I didn't realize how many lenses I'd used in the past two years in street photography. And I was thinking about why I did that. And, and there's, a two, I think, two reasons. One, um, a little bit for this channel, for having new topics and conversation, new content to create and share with you all, uh, rather than just the same old thing. But even more importantly than that, the main reason I've tried all these different lenses is, is at times when I get a little stuck or feel like I'm in a rut, when I'm returning to the same place, downtown Bellevue, and I want a new look at that place, one way to look at it differently is, is through different lenses. So that's part of the reason I have used all these different lenses. Uh, another little note up front uh, about all these different lenses, they've all been purchased by me. And uh, some of them are actually my wife's lenses, so they're not all mine, they're ours, but uh, that's just a note for you to be aware of. So let's start this with what I use the most, the most common setup I use, and what's often in my bag. And what's, and speaking of bags, this is my bag. It's the Peak Design 10 liter everyday sling because I use it every day as a sling. So there's that. So what goes in that 99% of the time? So most of the time what's in there is uh, a Fujifilm X-H2S along with a 16 to 80 Fujinon lens plus a uh, Fujinon 10 to 24 and a Fujinon 70 to 300. So I'll talk about each of these individually, but that's my primary trio of lenses with this camera. So let's talk about this camera for a minute. I do have a separate video all about uh, this camera as far as my first year with it, and I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, the short version of this camera is, uh, it's one of those things I didn't need, but I needed. So I didn't buy this camera because it has dramatically improved image quality. Let's be honest. In the uh, image quality in a comparable camera from 2023, to maybe even 2013, 2014, the past 10 years, has not improved all that much. What has improved, what has changed in that time, those 10 years, is the experience of making photos, the capabilities of the camera. And primarily that's everything happens a little faster and with less friction, hopefully. And then, <laughs> oh, I don't have a bubble. Ecamm put a little thumbs up bubble on my video here. There it is. Very cool, interesting. Uh, so I use the software called Ecamm to record directly to my computer from my camera. So it's a feature, not a bug. Anyway, uh, so this camera is, uh, again, similar image quality to previous X series cameras. But what is dramatically different is the speed of everything. As a, and additionally, the other thing that's dramatically different is the uh, video capability. So this is the most money I've ever spent on a camera. And uh, I felt a little guilty about it, but the amount of enjoyment I've gotten from using this camera, from enjoying it, creating lots and lots of photos in the past year and a half I've had this camera um, has been well, well worth it for me. I've, just the enjoyment, the reduction of friction in creating photos. Every time I pick this camera up, I enjoy it. So obviously this camera is quite a bit different than my previous camera, which was the X-T3. Uh, the main difference is the control dial setup. Let's see if we can get that focused here. 
there we go. Uh, the traditional setup on uh, the XT series cameras versus the mode dial setup on the XH. I have a confession. I originally got into the X series cameras because of that traditional control dial layout on the top plate. I really like <laughs> and prefer the control wheels and the mode dial on the XH cameras. I didn't think I would, but I really, really do. I find I'm faster uh, for auto uh, for exposure changes in manual mode with the control wheels than I was with the dials. So I know that's kind of a forbidden thing to say with two Fuji users, but uh, there it is. That's my opinion. Your mileage may vary. But I've really been happy with the camera, the X-H2S. Um, it, it does everything I need. I feel like I, it's a camera I can grow into. I've only scratched the surface, especially on the video side of things. Uh, there have been a number of firmware updates that have in, uh, addressed some issues uh, that I've been very happy with. So uh, I trust Fujifilm to continue to c provide updates for that camera and just it will only get better. All right, so let's talk about my trio of lenses that are almost always with me, uh, starting with the XF 16 to 80 millimeter F4. Uh, this lens is on my camera 90 plus percent of the time. Uh, it's, it's a great do-it-all lens. I really enjoy it. I have a video about it. I'll also leave that down below. Uh, it's, it does most of the things I need, and it does it really well in a for a zoom lens, pretty compact package. I think it's a good value for the price. Uh, this is a great lens for if you need to do most things, this lens can do it. That's been my experience with it. it the image quality is great. The autofocus is quick and accurate. Uh, the build quality is really good. Uh, weather resistance is nice. The image stabilization works really well. So uh, let's see if I can get another thumbs up bubble. There it is. So I give it a thumbs up. Oh no, that's going to be dangerous for me. All right, let's move on to the next lens that's in the bag most of the time, which is the uh, Fujinon XF 10 to 24 F4 wide angle lens. Um, I've had this lens a long time. I think I got it within the first year of moving to the Fuji system in 2014 ish. Uh, and it's another really good performer. It's pretty compact. Uh, works really well. The image quality I like. I'm really happy with it. I don't do a lot of wide angle, but when I do want to go wide, I want to go really wide and 10 millimeters gets me really wide. So I really like that capability. The reason I have this lens in my bag just about all the time is because there are occasions when you just need really, really wide. And this is the lens for that. Sometimes you need more than 16 millimeters. And when you do, this is the lens I'll reach for. So I'm really glad to have this. Yeah, so I'm really glad I have this lens. Uh, it's good to have these options for me. Uh, I'm the kind of photographer that I worry about the photos I miss uh, and that I'll stick in the back of my brain when I'm out creating photos. So having this in my bag is kind of mental insurance in that if I, I know that if I come across a wide angle situation, I have this lens with me. So it's peace of mind to have with me. I know I'm spoiled. All right, the next of the trio of lenses is the XF 70 to 300. And this is the lens the day it was announced uh, and available to buy, I was on the phone to pre-order one. So uh, yes, I did it by phone. I'll explain that at the end of the video why I did that. So anyway, um, and who I did it with. So. Uh, the 7300, I like telephoto. The more telephoto, the merrier. And I like minimal photos. So telephoto helps me do that. Simplify scenes by reducing stuff. And for a lot of my street photography, uh, I use this lens a lot for two main reasons. One, especially in downtown Bellevue right now, there is so much construction activity that this is the only way I'm going to be able to photograph it and not have teeny tiny people in the photos. Uh, secondly, for my kind of photography, especially in downtown Bellevue, uh, downtown Bellevue, to be honest, doesn't have a ton of personality, doesn't have a lot of distinct buildings, architecture, or features. So uh, showing the context, the big picture, is not necessarily all that helpful. So I can go a little more generic city with this lens by reducing some of the context and creating uh, different looks at scenes by getting really telephoto. Plus it works great on window washer day when they're all out and I'm not even gonna climb up on a building to go make their photos. So um, this lens for me, super great value, 
Uh, it's relatively small for a 70 to 300. I mean, it does zoom quite a bit and get larger. Um, my uh, image quality, I'm really happy with. Uh, autofocus has worked really, really well. Um, my one, one complaint with this lens is the aperture click is kind of loose. I am pretty much almost always bumping this as I'm holding the lens or putting it in and out of the bag. So I always have to double check my aperture because this one is a little loose. Uh, Fujifilm, um, go back to the 16 to 80. That's just the right amount of stiffness for your friend Michael. So in the aperture clicky ringness thing. So should we try two thumbs up? What happens with that? Ooh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that was unexpected. Before we move on to the other lenses I wanna discuss that I've used in the past two years in street photography, I do wanna mention the X-T3. Uh, this was um, kind of a game changer camera, I think, for Fujifilm. This was uh, a great combination of features and price uh, and performance when it came out in 2018 and i have just loved this camera it's it's great i've really enjoyed using it in fact i'm recording this video on an, an xt3 uh, i don't use this too much anymore it's kind of my backup camera but it's peace of mind to know that i can pick this up and get the same image quality i'm getting with the xh2s five years later um, You'll notice uh, that I have a small rig grip on here because for me, I, I like the extra grip. Uh, I need a little bit bigger camera and that's one of the things I do enjoy about the X-H2S with its built-in grip thickness. There we go. Um, so the, the interesting thing is once, you add, once I've added this grip to the X-T3, it is now larger and heavier than the X-H2S. So in some ways, this is progress in size and weight for me. Anyway, so great camera. I really like it. If you can get one, if you're thinking about a new camera uh, or a replacement camera or a first camera, uh, these are great values used right now. And uh, I, I would give it two thumbs up, but we don't need the fireworks again. So highly recommend the X-T3. All right, lenses. We're going to start at the wide angle and move our way through to the most telephoto and a couple zoom stops along the way. So I'm going to start with the Viltrox 13 millimeter f 1.2. Um, I've been really impressed with Viltrox uh, image quality and value and and autofocus speed. It's they're they're quite surprising. In fact, I'm recording this video on the 23 millimeter Viltrox f 1.4. So um, yeah, I think that's great image quality. This 13 millimeter is, as you can see, uh, a little bit larger. It is a bit heavier, it's dense. Uh, really good uh, build quality. The clickiness is quite nice on the aperture ring. And I like the image quality. But I tend to use the 10 to 24 Fujinon more because it's a zoom. Also, it's a, they're about the same size, but this is a little lighter. The Fujinon's a little lighter. So this to me would be if you are doing night street photography, astro photography, that kind of thing. Um, because at 1.4, that's going to get you a lot more light than F4 will. So, um, but I just don't use it too much. I'm considering selling it. I love the image quality. I really quite like it, but we'll see. So stay tuned on that. Great lens. I give it a thumbs up, but I don't know that we need the bubble again. So there's that. Next up is the Fujinon XF 16 to 55 F 2.8. This is one of their red badge lenses. So one of their higher quality premium lenses and it's lovely. Oh my goodness. It's a great lens. Um, image quality is amazing. Autofocus speed is really nice. Uh, but because of the way physics works in designing high quality lenses, it's dense and heavy. Uh, and it's also fairly expensive. Uh, so I love this lens. I tend to use it uh, for when I have paying client work. Uh, and it works really, really well for that. I'm really happy with it. It's oftentimes when I'm doing uh, event work, this might be the only lens I'll use that day because it covers so much and it does it so very, very well. This lens does not have um, image stabilization. So if your camera body does not have image stabilization, that's something to be aware of, but it's great. It's really a, a lovely lens. 
amazing image quality, uh, fast autofocus performance, and it's a winner. For me, this is a piece, another piece of mind lens, just like my uh, 10 to 24 that I carried so I don't miss wide angle photos. I don't know that the image quality in my eye is all that much better, but I know it is better. <laughs> and so when I'm out doing prof professional work where someone's paying me, uh, using this lens, again, just makes me feel, it's a psychological mind trick, like a professional. So that's part of the reason I use it, if I'm being honest. Uh, there was one occasion where I, I forgot, because this lens wasn't isn't always on my camera. It used to be the lens I used for video. Uh, but at one time, I had a client project that I forgot the 16 to 55 and had to use the 16 to 80. And I didn't really see a difference. Uh, the customer didn't see any difference. And yeah, food for thought. So anyway, it's a great lens. I'm glad I have it. Well, again, for event work, that extra stop of light at 2.8 at weddings and things like that is really, really handy. Speaking of f2.8, let's talk about the Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter 2.8. So there's a little difference in size here. Oops, come on. I can't think backwards. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the Sigma and here's the Fujinon. Uh, roughly equivalent focal lengths. Uh, you lose a little bit on the wide angle and telephoto with the Sigma, but uh, look at that. It's about half the price. Oh my goodness, that's a great value. Image quality is, is pretty comparable. I did make a video comparing the two lenses, link below. And, um, but it's a fun lens. It, it is so discreet, especially for street photography. It takes up so much less space. Um, and it's just nice. Again, I think when you're pointing cameras at people, this one is gonna get noticed quite a bit more with that really large front element versus this one. There, you know, this is a lot, the little Sigma is a lot more discreet for street photography. It's also a lot lighter. Um, two things about this lens uh, from a Fuji use, <laughs> Two things about this lens from a Fuji user perspective. Uh, the zoom works in the opposite direction to regular Fuji lenses, first party lenses, and there is no aperture ring on the lens. Additionally, there's no image stabilization. They don't mention weather resistance in here, but there is a, a gasket on the back. So again, for half the price of the 16 to 55, this holds up pretty well. Uh, this is the lens that's on my wife's camera most of the time uh, because she doesn't like anything heavy on her camera. So this is a great lens for her. Another zoom lens, the last one we'll talk about here for street photography, but this was also my first lens in the Fujifilm X system, which is the XF 18 to 135, F 3.5 to 5.6. It does it all. It'll go all the way from 18 to 135, have that big zoom range. Uh, it's, I like the image quality quite a bit. I know some people don't think it's all that great. I've had no problems with it. You're going to see some photos from that lens in this book, this zine. So more about that later. Uh, and it's great. I, I've had printed images from this really large and they hold up really well. Uh, autofocus speed is really good. It's got weather resistance, got image stabilization. It's a pretty decent value, I think, as well. So if you need a do-it-all lens and you like to go from wide angle to medium telephoto, it's pretty hard to beat this lens for versatility. Uh, and one of the things I really appreciate about Fujifilm is their zoom lenses have really comparable image quality to their primes. And, and I think in most cases, you'd be pretty hard pressed to tell the difference. So great lens if you need to do it all. Uh, don't mind a little bit of uh, extra weight and size of a lens that can do all these different things and you're clumsy like me and don't want to change lenses very often, this is one to consider. Highly recommend it still. The, the reason I'm not using it as much right now is because when I got the 70 to 300, uh, I realized ooh, if I had the 16 to 80, I'd get an extra two millimeters on the wide end and I get the reach of this, plus I get constant F4 on the 16 to 80. So that was my thinking. Uh, I still have it as a backup. Uh, it's also, again, another lens my wife uses quite often. All right, let's go to prime time. So let's start the prime conversation uh, with lenses I've used for street photography in the past two years with the Fujinon XF 30mm F2 macro lens. 
because you can't get close enough. And this lens can get so close. This lens, you can almost touch your subject, which has some advantages and disadvantages, but that's how you get maximum magnification with this lens. So again, from a, for street photography, when I want to be versatile, I do want to have, I don't want to carry all of these lenses, but I want to have some versatility. I've got 30 millimeter focal length, that field of view, which is equivalent in full frame to 45 to 50 millimeters. Uh, so kind of a, a normal view lens. I have that view, but I also have the flexibility. If I want to focus close on something and show you what I had for lunch at a detail level, this lens will do that. Um, I really like it. It's relatively small light. Uh, I think a decent value uh, as far as price. Nice clicky aperture ring. Again, like the... Um, like the 70 to 300, it's a little looser than I like on the on the clicks, so it's easy to bump from one aperture stop to another. Uh, again, I don't know if Fujifilm can just adjust their tightness a little bit on aperture rings to make me happy. Uh, great, great lens. Uh, I've used it a fair number of times for street photography, and I really, really enjoy it. It's one of those ones, it fits in your pocket if you got wearing jackets especially. It's just a great, easy way to carry an extra lens with lots of versatility. All right, from that 30 millimeter, we're gonna do another in that approximate field of view range. How about the oldie but a goodie, the uh, XF 35 millimeter F 1.4. Uh, this lens has a lot of personality. Uh, I think folks who love this lens love it because it, there is something unique about the way it renders images. Uh, I, I really like the image quality from this lens, but in day-to-day -day use for my street photography, there's a couple things that have gotten in my way and the reason I've only used it once for street photography. Autofocus is a little slow. I rely on autofocus. Um, it just works for me. Uh, Fujifilm's uh, focus by wire system, I can't seem to make it work reliably, so I just don't use it. So I need autofocus. So it's it's slow, a little bit inaccurate, especially on the X-H2S paired with some of the object detection modes. It didn't detect the object or detected the wrong object and focused incorrectly. But when it works, it's just lovely. It's it's tiny, it's light, it's, uh, a, you know, especially used. I think it's a really good value. I don't know that I would pay a new price for this lens now. Uh, but this is a lens we've had for 10 years, and it's a lens my wife has used quite a bit for her portrait photography, and she really likes it because of the image quality and the uniqueness of the way this lens does some special magic, I'll call it, because it's hard to put exactly into words. Next up, another prime lens, uh, keeping it kind of small, is the uh, Fujinon XF 50mm f2. Uh, every time I use this lens, I think, I should use this lens more. It's great. It's really small, really light, really discreet for street photography, gets a little extra reach, which is something I like. Um, but it's, the one reason I don't use it too, too much is that 50 millimeter, which is equivalent to 75, is kind of in that in-between zone for me. It's not quite close enough, and it's not far enough back sometimes. So uh, oftentimes I'm finding I'm having to move. I know that's not a bad thing, but... Um, it's not quite the way I see most of the time. But again, when I've used this, image quality I really liked, autofocus speed is really fast. Uh, nice click on the, on the uh, aperture ring. It's just the right amount of resistance and resist bumping from one aperture to another. I know I'm picky about that. So great lens, highly, highly recommend this as well. I'm not gonna put up the thumbs because we don't need more bubbles. All right. Last lens, and my newest lens, is another Viltrox. We started with Viltrox, we'll end this with Viltrox. It's the 75 millimeter f1.2. Oh my goodness, this is a beast. It's dense, you can just tell how much glass is in here. Look at that. It's huge, but it's amazing. This is another, I don't need this lens, but I need this lens. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot, but when I have, especially at 1.2, it's kind of magic. Uh, I really, really like this. I imagine I will use this a lot for portraits. I will use this uh, at night for street photography and where that F 1.2 is just gonna be so very, very helpful. But this is another one of those lenses because of its very large front element, it's not very discreet when you're out and about. So uh, I have used it once for street photography. I, I had a good time with it, I liked it. And uh, I'll leave a link to that video down below as well. So 
yeah, I really like this lens. I'm looking forward to learning more about this lens and figuring out uh, how it works for me and where it fits into my ecosystem. This is, I think for me, will be a, again, special purpose like portraits and uh, events work, but uh, I can also see bringing this out when I do night street photos, which I have some plans for in the near future. So speaking of the future, I'll do a, a little bit of a life update in just a minute, but just a quick wrap up on all this. I know there's a lot of lenses here and I know uh, <laughs> there's a lot of thoughts. If you have any questions about any of these lenses or personal experiences with any of them or other lenses you wanna contribute, uh, please leave that in the comments below. It'd be a big help. Uh, I've enjoyed these conversations, learned so much from you all and uh, greatly appreciate uh, that what you share. So thank you for that. So next, what I want to do is uh, give you a life update, where I've been for the past couple weeks, and uh, what it, uh, the rhythm of this channel going forward will likely look like. So uh, before I do that, though, again, we got to do a message from our sponsor. So our sponsor is me. This is my first published collection of photos. Uh, it's a ongo it'll be an ongoing zine I'm calling Revision, and this is volume one from Bellevue, Washington, that basically covers this time period. It's 2021 to 2023. It's 54 pages. There's about 90 photos. The print version is $22 and it's published by Blurb. Uh, through Blurb, you will buy it and they will ship directly to you. And uh, it is on eight and a half by 11 uh, size, US size, eight and a half by 11 inches. Uh, on really nice quality paper, uh, lots of photos in here. You may have seen them if you've been around this channel. There's also a digital version of this available. So the digital version is a download PDF. That's $11 at my website. Links will be below for all of these things. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed. Appreciate if you uh, would support the channel by uh, considering getting yourself a copy of one of these or for a friend or 10, that would be great. So here's the life update. Uh, what's going on is for this fall quarter 2023 uh, at Highline College, I was only offered two instead of the usual three classes. So that cuts my workload and compensation by one third. So I had to figure out a way quickly to try and compensate for that. So what I've done is I've contacted my local favorite camera store, which is Kenmore Camera. Uh, and that's where I telephone ordered <laughs> this lens and I think the X-H2S, all those things. Um, so uh, I'm working there part time. I'm there Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, which is makes means I'm actually working five days a week for the past three years teaching in Highline. Even when I've had three classes, only two of them have been on campus. One has been an online class asynchronous. So it's mostly answering emails, doing grades, doing class prep and things like that. Uh, so it hasn't, I've, I've, I've worked in the sense of being physically present on campus only two days a week for the past three years. Uh, so I don't know how you civilians do that. I'm finding out how much work it is, but also what a gift it was to allow me to go out and make so many more photos than I've, I've ever done. And once a week, go out and do content for this channel. It's more complicated now. I have two days a week off basically now. It's Tuesday and Thursday. And so I have to find days and a rhythm to still create stuff for you all and for me to share with you. So I haven't figured that all out yet. I'm hoping to still do hopefully maybe three out of four weeks a month videos. I'll let you know my plans each week uh, through the, the mess, not messaging, but that thing where I can make a post on YouTube. So look for that there. Also, you can follow me on Instagram or threads and I'll probably leave some information there as well. So that's the general update. So now you can say, you know someone who works at a camera store and I'd be glad to uh, provide some additional information. I'm learning all the other systems in addition to Fujifilm. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I have a long way to go in learning all those things. There's so much to learn, especially this time of year. But uh, I'd be glad to be a resource for you. Please let me know. Uh, again, that's Kenmore Camera. I will leave a link to them as well down below. Let's do the fireworks. There we go. So uh, <laughs> that's just going to make me laugh. Anyway, uh, thanks so much for your patience as I've made this transition uh, of life. I'm not sure where the next year or so is going to go, but uh, I appreciate your following along for the journey. Uh, I'm looking forward to making some more photos. I have plans to go out next week to downtown Bellevue again, and because it's been about a month since I've been there and I'm starting to miss it. So, 
So that's a little bit of my life update. If you have updates you'd like to share, comments below. I'd love to see that and uh, journey along with you as well. I really appreciate your following along uh, for the past few years or however long you've been with me on this journey and look forward to whatever the future may bring. So until I see you in the next video, I hope you stay safe, stay well, and have fun creating photos. Bye for now.